Shavuot Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi, Masechet Eruvin. We are up to Perik Yud Mishnachet. Today's Mishnayot should be Le'elu Nishmat, Neria ben Svedlana, Ranbai, Vniliyao ben Burcha Yisraelov, Menuchatam began Eden, Amen. This Mishnah describes a case in which the area under a tree's branches is a private domain. Ilan Shu Mesech Aretz, the Mishnah begins, This is the law of a tree that forms a covering over the ground, meaning... Its branches protrude, they come out from all sides of the trunk at a height of at least 10 vechim above the ground and slope downward, enclosing the area around the trunk. If the ends of its branches are not higher than 3 vechim above the ground, meaning they are within 3 vechim of the ground, which we know a gap of less than 3 vechim is considered closed, because of the principle of Lavud, the Mishnah says, Metaltelin Tachtab, we may carry beneath the branches because they are considered partitions that convert the area they enclose into a private domain. The Rav does point out that, however, if the branches sway in a normal wind, they are not valid partitions until they are tied down. The Mishnah now states another law about a tree, Shorashav Givuim Minaret Shushat Fachim. If its roots protrude, they come out from the earth to a height of three Tvachim above the ground. One may not sit on them on Shabbat because it is rabbinically forbidden to use a tree on Shabbat. The rabbis forbid using a tree on Shabbat, climbing on it, placing items on it, or even leaning on it to prevent people from violating the biblical prohibition against breaking off branches, leaves, or fruits from trees, which is the melacha of reaping kotzer. Now, if the roots protrude, they come out from the ground and reach a height of at least three tvachim, they too are considered trees and may not be used on Shabbat. But the rab says... If they are lower than three tfachim, they are regarded as part of the ground and you would be allowed to sit on them. Now, starting with the following halakha that we're going to quote from the Mishnah, this and the next four Mishnah deal with various laws that concern the use of doors on Shabbat. The first regards a door that is not attached to the building with hinges, but is simply jammed into the doorway. To open the door, one removes it from its position and puts it down. Hadelet. This is the law of a door to a backyard and a bundle of thorns that is used as a door and a gap in a wall and reed mats that are used as doors. And no, Alin Ba'en, we may not close the door with them on Shabbat because pushing them into place resembles the menacha of building. Their use is forbidden unless they dangle above the ground when not in use. So for example, they are tied with a rope that keeps them from touching the ground. Since they are suspended above the ground, they are clearly attached to the doorway and therefore appear to be designated for use as doors. So as in the case with regular doors, Closing the door with them does not resemble building and is permitted. And the Gemara on page 101a in Masechet Elohim says, even if they are suspended by mere hand's breadth from the ground, they would be considered like regular doors and closing the door with them would be permitted. And that is the end of Mishnah Chet. Now we learned earlier in Mishnah 4, the sages ruled that a person standing in a private domain is allowed to move an object in a public domain and vice versa, this Mishnah, Mishnah Tet, Mishnah number 9, cites the dissenting view of Rabbi Meir. A person may not stand in a private domain, pick up a key lying in a public domain, and use it to open a door in the public domain. So for example, he may not stick his hand out of his house, which is a private domain, pick up a key that is in the street, the public domain, and unlock a door that faces the street. Now the Rav says, this is prohibited according to Rabbi Meir, even if the key is less than four months from the door, and so he does not commit the transgression of carrying four months in Rishto Rabim, because Rabbi Meir says he might bring the key into the private domain. Likewise, a person may not stand in a public domain, pick up a key lying in a private domain, and use it to open a door in the private domain, because he might inadvertently bring the key into the public domain. In the second case, the case of standing in a public domain and using it to open a door in a private domain, this is forbidden unless he built a wall ten tefachim high before Shabbat to convert the area of the public domain in which he is standing into another private domain. He may then use the key since he is also standing in a private domain. These are the words of Rabbi Meir. Now the commentaries explain that in these cases, Rabbi Meir mentioned only public and private domains 
where the concern is that the person might violate the biblical prohibition of transferring the key from a public to a private domain or vice versa. Nevertheless, the commentaries say, Rabbi Meir rules the same way even where one of the domains is accommodate, meaning a person may not stand and accommodate and use a key in a public or private domain, or stand in a public or private domain and use a key and accommodate, because one might transfer the key into or out of the accommodate. Now this is prohibited even though the transgression of carrying an object into or out of a accommodate is only rabbinic. However, the sages cite evidence against this part of the mayor's ruling. Amrulo, they said to him, This was the practice in the butcher's market in Yerushalayim, which was similar to a comedy. The commentaries explain Yerushalayim was surrounded by walls and its gates were closed at night. Therefore, its streets were not a public domain. And in fact, every street was a private domain since it was within the city walls. Nevertheless, according to rabbinic law, carrying in or out of the streets of Yerushalayim was prohibited because Eruvei Chatzerot and Shetufei Mevot were not made to permit carrying in all the cities. So in this respect, the streets resembled the Kamalit, which is also subject to a rabbinic prohibition. When standing in the market, in the Kamalit, they would lock their boots, the exempt areas, and put the key on a windowsill above the door, which was a private domain. Now the keel in the door of the booth was more than 10 tfakhim above the ground. If it were lower than 10 tfakhim, the very act of moving the key from the keel to the windowsill would be forbidden regardless of where the person is standing because that would be a transfer from the keyhole, the kamalit, into a private domain. Rather, the keel is in the exempt area that is 10 tfakhim above the street and therefore moving the key from the keyhole, the exempt area, to the windowsill is Permitted. Now, according to the mayor, one should still be forbidden to use the key because he might bring it from the windowsill into the market to accommodate where he is standing. So this shows that one may stand and accommodate and move a key in a private domain, which contradicts the view of Rabbi Meir. Now, Rabbi Yossi disagrees with the account of this practice. Rabbi Yossi, Omer, Rabbi Yossi says, Shuk shel tzamarimaya. It took place in the wool merchant's market, not in the butcher's market. Now, the commentaries explain, Rabbi Yossi agrees with the sages in the dispute of Rabbi Meir. He disagrees only about where the practice occurred. And the Rab does tell us, not by a public domain and not by a kamili. That is in Rabotai after this Mishnah Yomi. Everybody should have a Shavuotov. Baruch Adonai Leolam. Amen. Amen.